Hi friends, this is Haruka from Planet Education. I'm also the host of College Knowledge Webinars. Today is April 7th, 2020 in California. We are starting week four of sheltering in place. It's this new normal where everybody is at home and it seems like everything has changed. For students and families who are navigating the college admissions journey, I want to share some ideas that can help inspire, motivate, and educate you as you still have to navigate the college admissions process through these challenging times. For sophomores and juniors in particular, six months from now, seven months from now, you will be working on your college admissions essays and one of them will be an opportunity to share some obstacles that you have faced uh, recently and I can tell you there are going to be a lot of people who are going to write about how this COVID-19 epidemic changed their lives and and so on and so forth but wait a second what are you going to write about admissions counselors are not going to want to hear yet another sob story so you're going to have to come up with some insightful and positive uh, essays that don't sound like a sob story. So good thing is I have some ideas for you. So listen up. If you are interested in any of the STEM majors, if you had been interested in 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 things like biology or chemistry up until this point. Maybe this epidemic has inspired you to dig a little bit deeper because I think in science there is biology, chemistry, but go deeper, cellular, molecular, microbiology, even epidemiology. If, if this has sparked that interest in you, you can write about how that happened. Maybe you're interested in diseases, whether it's asthma, diabetes, cardiovascular disease. We know that uh, COVID-19 attacks those, uh, affects those populations more severely. So uh, that's another idea. How about technology and engineering, right? So many students are interested in that. This, uh, ha this epidemic has uh, created a lot of um, opportunities for you know, uh, design. If you are interested in biology and possibly biomedical uh, engineering, uh, think of uh, vaccine devices, uh, vaccines, uh, my biomedical devices, ventilators. Now we see extreme engineering uh, taking place where 3D printers are used to create uh, 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 supplemental parts for for ventilators. Uh, we see testing kits being developed. We see um, kits that need to be developed faster uh, with results um, producing results for patients and their families and doctors. This has all become possible um, just because of this epidemic. Maybe you're interested in civil engineering. Uh, we'll, we see that you know, even even months ago, we saw that in China, it took 10 days to build a hospital. And that's happening now um, in in places like New York and and uh, even things like temporary morgues I'm reading about. But from a civil engineering pass perspective, um, um, you can you can. Um, explore those areas. For students who are interested in math or data science or statistics, never have we ever seen so much access to data, right? Um, we see the cases of those people infected, the number of deaths. We see the information, the data in, as sliced and diced by, by date and location from a macro perspective to a smaller perspective, right? International, national, state, by county, etc. And uh, this is a great way to see how data science is in action. Um, I still think that there's a lot of room for uh, more slicing and dicing because I don't see so much about dem 
as much about demographic demographics or or socioeconomic status. Um, as time goes by, we're going to see more of that. So keep your eyes open. If you're interested in business, um, you can see how supply chains have changed. Companies like Tesla, companies like General Motors that are automobile companies have leveraged their expertise in using, you know, building uh, ventilators in this um, time of dire need. Even clothing companies like The Gap have, and smaller companies as well, are shifting gears so that they can produce uh, personal protective equipment for our uh, nurses and uh, health professionals. Um, obviously, the biggest one is uh, if you're interested in the health professions, uh, doctors, nurses, ER professionals, and public health. I think that's kind of been a, a a field that not many people had thought about, but we realized that with an epidemic like this, public health is huge. Um, there are also organizations maybe you hadn't known about, but uh, Centers for Disease Control, World Health Organization. Uh, you know, these are huge uh, uh, research organizations. Maybe that, you know, you're more, more interested in biology behind the scenes. So look into those organizations as well. Uh, if you're interested in the economics uh, from a, a macro perspective, looking at how businesses are affected, uh, the stock market has been so volatile recently. It's an announcement, things go up, things go down, and people, you know, the pundits are expecting a worldwide recession. So think if, if that is an in area of interest let you know find out um, what are the 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 variables what are they looking at what are the indicators for a recession and also more importantly how about for the recovery figure out how did we recover from other past recessions and depressions hopefully you can help us figure out the learning so that we can uh, re overcome this uh, epidemic as soon as possible this epidemic has also prompted a, an explosion in uh, the different ways to deliver medicine and communication. From delivery of medicine, uh, there's telemedicine. Doctors are trying to uh, be able to connect with patients um, using the internet. So instead of seeing somebody, now they're, they're going through a checklist to see if you can uh, see if you are in date, you know, if you, to do a uh, home check to see if you have COVID symptoms or not. Um, there is a need for interpreters and, and even using tele, um, uh, teleconferencing with interpretation. That's becoming more and more common these days. Uh, even for engineering, collaboration has always happened on some, has, has been already you know, taking place uh, across borders. But now more than ever, people are sharing information, best practices, designing, delivering, so that we can come up with better ventilators and better equipment that can serve more people uh, faster. Um, and then produce them, right? Um, because we want to save lives as much as possible. Maybe you're not interested in STEM, you're interested in say government or the public sector. Uh, this has been a time when we can see world leaders, let's say Angela Merkel or um, of Germany or other international leaders. There are leaders on every level, international, federal, state, and local level. We see how people collaborate or don't collaborate. We see organizations like the World Health Organization, the United Nations, CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, um, National Institutes of Health. Um, uh, we see how uh, allocation of resources are uh, adapting to where there is greater need or less need, um, right? And then from a community level, you can see how uh, the, there are 
populations that are most vulnerable? How are we treating the homeless, the low income families, the elderly, all of these vulnerable populations? If you are interested in social services, um, this is maybe that prompts your, your uh, motivations that way. Social media has exploded over the last few weeks and this has been you know, the, the only way to deliver news, it seems, right? Um, so if you're interested in a career in communications, um, you can uh, learn how social media, how, how viral um, communication works, which is, you know, and things that go viral, this is both a blessing and a curse, right? We see how fake news can be, um, very, very damaging and sometimes uh, eclipses what is uh, most important, you know. But facts do matter and, and let's make sure we, we do the right thing. Um, I know that in the education industry, which is my industry, there's been just an explosion of online learning. Uh, overnight, students and teachers have to embrace online learning whether they like it or not a lot there was a lot of resistance and now out of necessity we have to figure out how we can deliver education curriculum effectively um, remotely even testing right SATs ACTs out of necessity they have to figure out ways to proctor students and um, you know create testing uh, environments that can still be reliable and uh, uh, valid for their students and the industry. So those are some ideas, okay? So whether you are a student or a parent, you, the, you know, juniors are going to be writing college essays in the fall. And so when that time comes, I want you to be very thoughtful and mindful and proactive and positive coming up with ideas of how your future major was prompted or evolved as a result of this epidemic. Hope that helps. Uh, you can come to my College Knowledge webinars on Thursdays at 4 o'clock if you want uh, Pacific time, if you want to get more inspiration, uh, I encourage you to do that. And the series, the spring series is $250. That's with a $150 coupon code for this uh, period that we're all going through. So um, take a look at my website, planeteducation.com. I'll put the link on my website, uh, on, on this uh, Facebook page as well, and hope that you can um, stay safe and, and uh, uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.